My mom doesn't cook very often. My family's food usually comes from freshly made Korean side dishes, already packaged in clear, easy to open containers, named combined with another person's mother's kitchen. These are in turn sold at H Mart, where my mother buys them ritualistically every Monday night, which in our household is designated as the food stock. Later, they get transported into the refrigerator, only to be taken out after the rice has been cooked, cooked over the stove. My dad is very adamant about being a natural, and placed neatly in the ceiling around painted porcelain plates, as if they were actually homemade. They taste good, they're healthy, they're traditional Korean food, and as far as we are concerned, that is good enough for us. My mom doesn't cook very often, but when she does, usually Japanese curry. Yes, she does cheat and use golden curry for the sauce box, but everyone who has tried it using the very same brand of sauce and followed her very carefully and procedures hasn't been able to produce the rich, creamy Japanese curry my mom makes. It has a special taste to it, the perfect balance of salty and sweet, whole. We can always tell when it's curry day, because for the first time in a long time, the kitchen is bustling with activity. The sound of the fridge being opened, with several things shuffling inside, the door closing, the moving and rustling bags, the water running without stopping, and the move in the corner of the cupboard, the confident snacks, vegetables, and sliced on the cutting board. All of that makes the curry much more special than the two stews we have every night. It means the peeling of potatoes. Something it still can't do without peeling the skin by hand after heating them up in the microwave. It means pepper of all different colors. Red, green, yellow. It means the breaking off of broccoli, dipping them into the thick yet rich bubble of goodness and stored every so often in the By the time the house is filled with the tantalizing smell of Japanese curry, my sister and I have already tasted the spoon sent me a batch, and every time, Wallace. Friends who have come over and tried the curry have deemed it the best Japanese curry they have ever tasted and brought second helpings home, but I was always picky, never satisfied. The funny thing is, I don't like curry. I have always been the picky eater in the family, much to the disappointment and frustration of my parents. So watching my mother spend her time making something homemade, something she was good at, but not being able to enjoy it was as entirely as everyone else did, has always made curry seem like a sad meal to me. It represents my mother, hardworking, careful, resourceful. And the emotions that come with tasting a spoonful of her curry represent my relationship with her. Strained, lingering, not fully there. Since I've moved out and started cooking for myself, my mom sometimes asks me whether I've ever tried making curry. My sister has done it countless times. Never quite successfully, she had always been a fan of my mom's curry, but I haven't. The strange thing is, the other day I felt the overwhelming urge to cook curry. When I told my mom this, she promptly came over and dropped me a box of golden curry in a container of all. So you can tell the difference, she said. I haven't made that curry, but I've eaten all of hers. I don't love it any more than I did before, but it tastes good. It tastes like familiarity. Like the wooden furniture in the kitchen, and the faint smell of dusty cupboards, and the wooden cooking spoon that lies in there. It tastes like home.